Hey everybody in the YouTube world, this is Chris aka Barn on 11970 and as always I thank you for watching my video. Um, now I know by the title, this is going to seem a little strange at first, so I ask you to please bear with me and listen to this whole video and you will see that it makes sense. Um, for those of you who have never watched my videos before and they're just watching this because of the title, this is going to seem very strange to you. So if you don't watch some of my videos, you're not going to understand this. Um, for those of you who do watch my videos, at first you're going to be, well, why is he talking about the subject? Why will this make sense? Again, bear with me, listen to the entire video, and I will explain to where it will make sense. Now, the one thing that I've noticed recently, the brain is like any other muscle in the body. If you don't use it, it becomes weak and small. When you start using it, it becomes powerful in ways that you will never understand. And especially recently, I found that the more I've been using this brain to study and research and educate my body through knowledge and wisdom, the more expansive my capacity of thought becomes. It's amazing. And that's one of the reasons why the elite people of the world want us to be entertained and distracted by things like Miley Cyrus, and the New York Yankees. And again, people say, well, why are you wearing this hat? For me, this is a reminder of what I once was and what my priorities once used to be. So I wear this as a reminder never to go back to that. So they keep us dumbed down because watching American Idol does not expand your mind. Watching mindless entertainment keeps you amused, but it keeps you distracted. I've been starting to get to the point where I'm researching almost hours every day. And I've gotten to the point now where I can actually start seeing things allegorically and understand things in ways I never thought I could before. So let's get into the title of this video and what I mean from it. Now, I'm not talking the literal sense. I'm not saying there are zombies or vampires that live amongst us. Physically, no. Literally, no. Symbolically, let me explain. Let's first go with the zombies. Now, what are zombies? They are basically, in a nutshell, walking dead. They walk around feeding off of one another. What's the symbolism behind that? Well, if you have watched my previous videos, and if you haven't, I recommend it, especially the last week and a half worth of videos, you will know that walking dead is actually us, we the people. Now, let me explain so that makes sense to you. When you are born and you get a certificate of live birth signed by your parents, but through admiralty law, and again, you don't have to believe in this. It, it's irrelevant whether you believe something or don't believe in something. Truth is truth, whether you believe it or not. But under admiralty law, when you're born, they consider you cargo coming off of a vessel, a ship coming out of water onto dry land. When the mother leaves the placenta behind and they also extract the blood from the baby's foot, the bottom of the foot, which is, by the way, called the soul, go figure, they extract the DNA from that child. And what that does is claims the evidence of that child, the proof of who you are. Because if I say my name is Chris, that's nothing more than hearsay. Because anybody can call themselves anything they want. And as far as IDs, anybody could make a fake ID if you have the right amount of money. So just saying who you are and saying, oh, here's a document that says it, does not prove who you are. That's hearsay. But DNA evidence, each person's strand of DNA is different. So it proves that you are who you say you are. That's why in murder cases, when they have DNA evidence, it links them to the criminal. They own it because we not knowingly know that they would do this to us. We abandon that placenta. One man's garbage is another man's treasure. So what they do is they wait for you a certain amount of time to claim it. And because we don't know anything about it and we think that's silly and crazy, just like some of the people watching this now do, and I don't blame you, they take it as abandoned and claim it for themselves. And what they do is, let's say your name is John Smith. John Smith was born, let's say, January 1st, 2013. And they wait a couple of days, wait a couple of weeks. I don't know the time limit. 
But after that baby's born and the parents take that proud child home, nobody comes and claims that DNA. They say, okay, John Doe, he never came to get his DNA. He must be dead. Not physically dead, legally dead. There's a difference. Think of it in terms of Gilligan's Island. If you've ever seen Gilligan's Island, a bunch of people were stranded on, on an island for years and nobody knew where they were or if they were even alive. So even though they were not dead, in their government, they would have been declared legally dead. What is legally dead? Just like a zombie walking around, but considered legally dead. So a zombie is you. Not literal, not in the literal sense, allegorically and figuratively. Because we walk around with identification that we think is us. That is actually, they create a fictional character, a corporation. Now, you can have stock in corporations. If people have heard that they trade our, our being, our corporations on the stock market. Listen to this. Have you ever heard the expression, when two wealthy people are about to get married, you hear the term or you hear the expression, they're good stock. It's not coincidence because if you're investing in a very poor company that could potentially go out of business, well, that's not very good stock, is it? You don't really want to invest in a company that could go under in any moment. But if you have a company that has a lot of money invested and a lot of people investing in it and wealthy people involved in it, well, that's good stock, isn't it? So it's again, it's not a coincidence. So I want people to understand when you're thinking allegorically, when you watch shows like The Walking Dead, or if you watch any of these movies like World War Z and all these all of a sudden zombie movies, that's them making fun of you. Because even though you are not physically dead, you are legally dead and you don't know it. So you go around eating brains. Now, eating your brain means you're not using it, means you're dumb. That's why they should, not dumb in the sense that you don't know things, but dumb in the sense that you don't know who you are and what you are because of what they've done. So eating away your brain means you're taking away your wisdom, your intelligence by being distracted by things like watching the New York Yankees and stuff. Which, by the way, the reason I wear this hat, because a couple of people have asked me about this, I don't have cable TV now. I haven't had it in almost two years. And this hat is a reminder to me of where I used to be and what I used to hold priority. So that's why I wear this. It's a, it's For me, it's a reminder. So symbolically, we are the zombies. We are not physically dead. It's just like a person about to go into the execution chamber as they're walking to it, then what do they say? Dead man walking. He's not literally dead. So I'm not talking about creatures that come out of the ground and come alive. No, I'm talking about legally dead people that are walking around with brains that are getting smaller and smaller, and they're just slugging around, not knowing what they're doing, not accomplishing anything like a zombie in the movies. So that's the first one. Okay, so what are Dracula? Well, what are vampires? Well, if you think about vampires, they're always shown as aristocratic type of people, noble people. They tend to walk around in fancy clothes with a cane, top hats. They tend to live in castles, very wealthy areas. So they don't tend to be some bum on the street. They tend to be very classy, very aristocratic. Okay. Now, if you know about the history of vampires, now, again, I'm not saying they're real. Do not take this literally. I'm talking about a story and a symbolic reason for them. One of the laws about vampires is a vampire cannot come into your home unless you welcome them in. You give them permission. You invite them. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you've watched the videos I've made recently and we talk about the fact that through our silence, we consented. Well, a vampire... According to the legend and the, the story, they only can come into your house if they're invited. Now, how do they get invited? Well, they trick you. Like, for example, and again, I'm just using this as a story. If a vampire wanted to come into your house and they know they have to be invited in, well, they can disguise themselves. Like, for example, come in as a plumber and you invite them in. So they've tricked you 
by not telling you who they really are and you've invited them into your home, which means you've now given them power over you and you become powerless. You give your power over to that vampire, symbolically. Now, again, if you know about what I've been talking about recently, I talk about the fact that because our silence can sense the only way they can govern us, because the decor the Constitution, even the new one that was ratified in 1871, is only valid and only works be through the consent of the governed. Now, if you don't know that this Constitution was switched in 1871 and, and you didn't know that the United States of America became the United States, which is a corporation located in D.C., well, you wouldn't know that you got tricked into volunteering to serve that corporation. So it's just like the story behind the vampire. They can, what they're telling you is aristocratic wealthy people who have the control and the power to suck your blood. And if you take the blood as your wealth and your power, they can only do it through your consent. And the way they get your consent is to trick you. Well, if you know about what's happening with our government and how they tricked us by making us not understand the definition of the word citizen, which was ratified in the 14th Amendment in, the, in 1865, I believe, or 1868, it's irrelevant, but they changed it to a legal definition of a citizen is a person born or naturalized in the United States, not the United States of America, the country, the United States the corporation in all capital letters, and subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. Now go to my other videos to see more definition of that. I'm not going to get into that again. So symbolism through all of this, and this is why you see so many zombie movies and so many vampire movies. And here's another symbolism I want you to think about. Um, if any of you have watched Spike TV, a couple of years ago, I don't know if it's still on. Like I said, I don't own cable. I don't watch mainstream media and waste my time with that stuff anymore. But they had a show called Ultimate Warrior where they had, you know, what if scenarios of certain warriors throughout history got to fight each other. And I think either in um, the second season or third season, I don't know how many seasons there are, but they had a special version of that show where they did what if zombies attacked vampires of all the different kinds of creatures, they happen to pick those two. Let me show you symbolically what that means. Because ultimately in the end, they showed that the vampires won. But what they did explain to people is for the zombies to win, they had to mass together to defeat one vampire. So they're saying to you symbolically that if the people, the zombies, unite against the elitists, the vampires... It takes many of us to be able to defeat them. United we stand, divided we fall. So because the zombies, us, are so overly medicated, we are legally dead and don't know it, we walk around without a purpose, we're losing our intelligence and wisdom through the entertainment industry and being dumbed down, well, we're sluggish creatures that really don't know what's going on, so we've lost our power. The vampire, which is the elitist, the wealthy aristocrat, are the ones that have all the power, they have all the money, they have all the strength, they've been able to get invited into your home unknowingly, so they have the power to do things on their own, not technically, because they have their security forces, they have their military, they have the police, they have the money to back themselves. So if one zombie tried to defeat one vampire, the zombie wouldn't have a chance. But if you take hundreds of zombies, they can defeat the one vampire. So again, I'm not talking about literal sense. If you see it this way, it should make sense to you. So next time you watch The Walking Dead or some zombie movie like World War Z, you have to realize those zombies symbolically are you and they're making fun of you. And they're telling you that we're the vampires, we're the aristocrats, we're the wealthy, we have the control, we need to be invited in to be able to control you and take away your power, and we can do it through trickery and deceit. And that's what they did when they uh, ratified the Constitution, and that's what they did when they legally defined the words person, the legal de definition of citizen. They've been able to get through our consent an invitation to govern us.
So all we have to do is no longer consent. And it's that simple. So hopefully people watch this to the end. Um, if you watch this to the end, I want you to say in your comment, whatever else you write is fine, but I want you to say, I, I love zombies. All right, guys. So I'm going to keep doing as much as I can to help people. We do have the power. We just have to realize that we have that potential. So keep sharing these videos. Make your own. Share other people's videos to talk about this. I know this is a slow process, but it's speeding up like we've never seen before. I mean, how many of you heard of this five years ago? A few of you may raise your hand. How many of you have heard this 10 years ago? A lot less held oh, put up their hands. Think of it like, for example, having a snowball. Now, I'm not talking about an ice ball. I'm not talking about something that has a rock in it or anything like that. Just a regular snowball you pick up. Now, if you throw it at somebody, it's not going to do major damage. It may sting if you get them in the right spot. You may hit them in the eye and it might burn for a second, but you're not going to kill somebody. So a snowball in itself is not powerful, just like an individual snowflake is even less powerful. But if you take that snowball and you go on the top of a mountain full of snow and you roll it down the hill, well, at first it's going to take a little time. But as it goes down and down and gathers more and more snow, it becomes larger and larger to the point where that gigantic amount of snow can destroy a village. So it's speeding up. Think of it this way. How many thousands of years have people been trying to even discover this truth? And we're at the point now, by a click of a button, we can get information instantly all over the world. We are making a difference. What they want you to do is think through an individual way that one person can't make a change. That is absolutely the way they want you to think. They want you to think, I'm just one person. I can't do anything. Well, somebody woke you up. And some of you, like myself, have taken it upon themselves to help wake other people up. So you are making a difference. And the more we do this, the faster it will be. So for those of you who sit there and say, oh, there's nothing I can do. Well, then if you do nothing, you're absolutely right. And this is what I've come to understand through the movie The Matrix. Now, I know a lot of people that are awoken have either watched The Matrix or at least know about it. And the biggest scene they know about is when Neo first finds Morpheus and they're sitting down on the couch and Morpheus goes to Neo, do you want to know what the Matrix is? And of course, Neo, out of his curiosity, says yes. Neo says, I cannot show it to you. I cannot explain it to you. It has to be seen. And then he takes out a red pill and a blue pill. Now, most people would say, well, what, what is the symbolic significance of this? I always wondered, what was the sense? Why did they have to do that? Well, I've come to realize that the blue pill and the red pill are nothing more than choice. So Neo had to make a choice because if he took the blue pill, he would go back to sleep and he could think anything he wanted to think. If he takes the red pill and then he will actually make the decision to learn what was really going on. So the the red pill and the blue pill were nothing more than choice. And that is what we do every day. The freedom of choice is the fact that we can stand up and fight for what we believe in and overcome on, you know, overcome the odds and make a difference. Or we can choose to say, this isn't worth it. I can't do anything. Nothing's going to change. So I'm just going to be one of those people that give up. Well, then you've created your truth. Nothing will change because you're not helping it to change. And that's what they want. They want you to be depressed, angry, fighting amongst ourselves, bankrupt, poor, confused, scared, threatened, and think you have no power. If vampires were supposedly the rulers of the planet, then they would have nothing to be scared about. And that's why you see even like the werewolves, they always guard the vampires. Well, wouldn't that be a symbolism for the police? So if they were so, if they had so much power, why do they need to be protected? Think about this symbolically and you'll understand it. So don't give up. Share this video. Share other people's videos. Make your own videos. Get this out. Because the more people that contribute and decide that it's time to make that change, the faster it will get done. The more people that decide it can't be done, the slower it goes. You make that choice. Here's the blue pill. 
go back to sleep, pretend everything's fine, keep watching your Yankee games or whatever you like to watch, and go on with your life. The red pill, you make a change, you decide to make an effort, you decide to say that you can make a difference, and you want to really know what's going on, no matter how scary or strange it may be. Which do you choose? Peace.